What's going on everybody? Today we're doing an analysis and inspection on the coolant temperature sensor on my 2007 Yamaha FZ6. We're going to go over all the specs, where to find it, and everything to do with the coolant temperature sensor. The coolant temperature sensor isn't bad on this bike, but I just want to do an analysis on it, show you guys what it looks like, because I know some people have issues with it. So today we're going to dive deep into it, get it uncovered, and hopefully resolve some of your issues that you're having out there with your coolant temperature sensor. If this video helps you out, please smash the like and subscribe button down below. Now let's go. The coolant temperature sensor is that green wiring harness connection. It's right beside the coolant outlet pipe on the back of the cylinder head. Removing the tank just means taking off the side pod plastics, the two Allen heads at the top of the tank, and the 10 mil that hinges the tank at the back. With the tank off, you can get pretty easy access to the coolant temperature sensor. It's also pretty visible from the right side. That's it right there, the green knob. All right, to unplug the coolant temp sensor, I'm gonna reach down from up. You gotta thumb it, not on the tail end up here, but actually in the middle. Slide it off, there we go. That is the coolant temperature sensor right there. We're gonna access it from out here. We're gonna get our multimeter leads in there so we can probe it. But first we gotta figure out what the resistance is that it should be reading. Per the Yamaha manual, the coolant temperature sensor should be at 5.21 to 6.37 kilo ohms at zero degrees Celsius, which of course would be hard to test in the bike, or it should be between 0.29 to 0.35 kilo ohms at 80 degrees Celsius. It also mentions that you should handle it with care because if you drop it, you could damage the sensor, and if you do drop it, replace it. Now Yamaha recommends removing the sensor, putting it in water, either water that's like getting the sensor down to zero degrees or getting it up to 80 degrees and then measuring the resistance. And this is a thermometer measuring the water temperature, but I'm gonna show you a way we can do it without having it out of the bike. All right, to probe the sensor, we're gonna get our multimeter set to under 20,000 ohms because that's the lowest range that is suitable. We're gonna get our two probes and work it down at the temperature the coolant is currently sitting at, which is low, somewhere around 40 degrees Celsius, it's reading 1.17 kilo ohms. So I know the Yamaha manual says that you should either test the sensor at zero degrees or at 80 degrees, but I don't wanna take the sensor out of the bike and you probably don't as well. So what I'm thinking we're going to do is that we're going to get the bike up to 80 degrees Celsius. But I know what you're thinking, Calvin, my temperature sensor doesn't work. How am I gonna know it's at 80 degrees Celsius? Well, I recommend you invest in a multimeter that has a temperature probe. I'm gonna connect my temperature probe to my multimeter, hold it in the radiator, let the bike get up to 80 degrees Celsius, shut the bike off, then go in there and probe the sensor as close as I can get it reading to 80 degrees Celsius on my temperature probe on my multimeter. The only other idea I have is using weather to the advantage. If you live in a cold climate and you can put the bike outside to where it gets close to zero degrees Celsius, you could test it in those conditions. But the only reason I recommend you don't take it out is because you need a crush washer to seal the coolant temperature sensor into the back of the cylinder head, and that can be a pain to deal with or finding another one. We're gonna try and figure out if we can do it within the bike, pretending our sensor is broken. So I'm gonna reconnect the fuel tank, get it propped up here, get the bike running, get it reading up to around 80 degrees, you know, close as we can. If we can get a reading that's, you know, 80 degrees plus minus five degrees, we can take that into account when we're doing our measurement, knowing whether we're just over or just under the measurement. But it's very likely that if you've got a broken coolant temperature your sensor it's going to be either an open circuit or resistance that's sky high so if we're in the ballpark of the spec for 80 degrees then we're good let's get it just after a couple moments we're already seeing the temperature rise on our probe so at least it's working So I turned the bike off because our coolant temp on the dash is showing about 76, uh, 79 now. And I'm just trying to get a temp off the back of the cylinder head with my temp probe. And currently the temp probe is showing about 67. So I'm just trying to find a way to get an accurate reading with the temp probe off the motor to find where the right spot needs to be to actually display a good temp. This is getting better. Okay, temp probe says 82, dash says 80. So what we could conclude is that this hole on the left side of the cylinder head, which I think all FZ6 have, is a great place to probe for temperature. It's right in there, I guess, against like the water jacket. Okay, so we got our multimeter set up here. Uh, now it's time to probe it. The bike is sitting at around 80 degrees Celsius. It's about as close as we can get it. I've disconnected the sensor. I'm now gonna reach in there and try and probe it. It doesn't matter which side you land a probe on, just that you get a probe on. Oh, 
0.32 kilo ohms RTFM. Ah, that's great. Uh, so we got 0.32 kilo ohms when probing the sensor and that's around 80 degrees and that's within spec, but it actually works. You can use a temp probe to discover what temp the cylinder head is and approximate your 80 degrees, even if your temperature sensor isn't working. And then you can verify that it's producing the right amount of resistance at that temperature. What a find. As for actually getting the sensor out, I tried putting a 19 millimeter deep socket over top of it, half inch drive, and it didn't fit. It gets hung up on the plastic here. But I was able to finagle in a 19 millimeter wrench from this side, from the clutch cover side. It was a very, very tight fit, but I think that's the best way to do it. The other way to do it would be to take off your like full ITB rack, and then you could definitely get a wrench on it much more easily. But I think you could get a cheeky wrench in from the side here. You wouldn't be able to torque it, but you definitely would be able to get it out. So it's a tight 19, maybe handy to have a 20 millimeter wrench on hand, but it should be able to be done with a 19 millimeter. Best of luck to you if you're going for this. So that's a wrap on diagnosing and analyzing the coolant temp sensor in my 2007 Yamaha FZ6. Just goes to show that you can assess the coolant temperature sensor without removing it from the bike. Of course, best practices would be to remove it from the bike and check it both at 80 degrees Celsius and at zero degrees so that you could figure out whether the range of the sensor was appropriate. But at getting one test for free at 80 degrees Celsius without having to take it out, buy a new washer, go through the hassle, it's a lot of finicky knuckle work to get the sensor out. It's a pretty good uh, cheap solution there. I'd, I'd say we found a golden gem here. Of course, like I said, you could use the environment to your advantage, leave it outside maybe overnight, let it get really cold or as cold as you can in your climate, and then check the resistance at that temperature and see just how close it is to the zero degrees and try and figure out whether it's approximately moving in the direction of being at the right resistance for zero degrees Celsius. Your mileage may vary with that one. As always, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoy this FZ6 content. There's more to come over the summer because I'm only riding this thing more. And believe me, I'm still hunting down that misfire. Thanks for watching as always. Please smash the like and subscribe button. And as always, have a good day.